It took 800,000 machine hours to render a 14,240 animation frames, spread across 117 computers running 24 hours a day, with each individual frame taking from 44 minutes up to 30 hours to render. We're talking about nearly 300 days of render time for the original Toy Story and that was back in 1995. However, still, to this day, big animation studios take as much time to render their movies, if not more. So why does it take this long to render 3D animation movies? To kick things off, we're gonna start with the most obvious and prominent element, and that is the complexity of the scenes or the level of detail shown on the screen. This factor is quite crucial as it pushes the render time the most. To put things into perspective, let's start with a simple cube. It consists of six faces, meaning six polygons, which also is made of eight individual vertices. Now, the computer has to calculate the word position, scale, and rotation of each separate vertex, which is eight multiplied by three, meaning 24 coordinates to be calculated. Now, let us duplicate this simple cube, and we got ourselves 48 coordinates to be calculated. Let's make a thousand of those, and the computer will have to process a whole load of coordinates, thus logically taking a longer time to render. For the sake of simplicity, we have used a simple cube, and we don't often see Pixar or DreamWorks animations using cubes, do they? Actually, we would see highly complex objects, such as characters and foliage. We are talking about millions of polygons per object spread across the scene on each frame. And on top of this, everything is dynamic, meaning a ridiculous number of vertices are constantly changing each frame, which results in a ridiculous number of calculations that have to be done. So most often these 3D objects are incredibly detailed and intricate. So it takes the computer a very long time to process and render. The next time you look at a busy street, or across a sea of people in a crowded area, imagine trying to give coordinates of every detail you see, every point of a set geometry, and this includes both hard surface geometry and especially organic ones. With that being said, you will still have to process the final output of the frame. This includes materials that are a bunch of 2D textures and shaders that are composed of spaghetti mathematical functions and so on. Not to mention simulation, which is a huge problem when it comes to hardware and calculations required for rendering in your machine. This one is gonna be interesting. But before we continue, I want to let you know about today's video sponsor, which is this cool looking 3D software called 3Xam. It is an innovative 3D editor designed to help creators bring their ideas to life. 3Xam is designed specifically for Apple Silicon chips, making it incredibly fast and efficient. It can run up to 30 projects simultaneously at once. And the reason you want to work on 30 projects at the same time is kind of out there to me, but you have the horsepower if you want to do so. In part because of the Apple new fast M1 and M2 chips, but also because the software is really optimized for a specific hardware. For people who aren't Mac users, don't worry. In the next few months, the software will also be available to work with on devices with Intel processors as well. 3Xam promises a lot of performance improvements when compared to other 3D software, with up to 10 times faster rendering, which is a game changer for all 3D artists, not to mention its user-friendly interface and extremely easy learning curve. It also supports a wide range of file formats that can be imported and exported, including files for NFT and metaverse projects. Now, here is the thing, 3Xam is currently in beta and they want to invite all artists and graphic designers to try the software for free and give their feedback. In return, the devs are hosting a huge competition with 250 prizes under 5 categories. The categories are as follows. Best Debug, Best Animation, Best Render, Best Time, and Best AR. For example, the Best Debug category number 1 spot winner will get a MacBook Pro 14. The second and third will get Mac Pro Air M1, fourth will get an iPad Pro 12.9, and for the fifth place to tenth, they will get an iPad Pro 11, and the rest will get a 50% discount for a yearly subscription of 3Xam. And you can see all the prices in this chart right here. Also later this year, 3Xam is planning to include a lot of new features such as tools for VR 
an AI text to 3D generator engine, just to name a few. So what are you waiting for? If you are a Mac user and you want to get the chance to try and win a lot of prizes, click the link in the description down below and download 3 exam now totally for free. So, as I said before, simulations and visual effects are considered a significant factor that impacts the rendering time. That is, of course, depending on the complexity and scale of the effects implemented. For example, explosions, smoke, fire, water, hair, and snow are created using particle systems, which simulate the behavior of movement of individual particles in the real world using real-world physics. The more particles are in the scene, the longer it will take to render. And these animation studios will make these particle systems as dense as they need to create a pretty high voxel resolution to create these stunning, fluid, and realistic simulations. And of course, the computer has to calculate the position and behavior of each particle in every frame of the animation. Take for example the character Soli from Monsters Inc. He had 25,336 key hairs, which are used to guide the motion and shape of the other 2.3 million hairs. As a result, it took 11 to 12 hours to render a single frame of just Sully's animation, let alone animating him interacting with external forces such as wind and other particle systems such as snow. As Steve May, who was a simulation and effects sequence supervisor, said, this kind of shot makes sweat roll down your forehead for how complex they are, and we are talking about millions of particles intersecting and affecting each other alongside the environment they are set in, including collisions and gravity. Generally speaking, most studios use path tracing to render their movies, which is an advanced version of ray tracing. This is the case because it is the most efficient rendering method, but still computationally expensive. In fact, it drains resources so much that it was invented in the 80s but has become practical only recently, I mean in the last couple of decades or so. It is usually used in conjunction with denoising methods, which only increases the render time even further. Path tracing sends tens, hundreds, and thousands of rays for each pixel to be rendered. When the rays hit the surface, it doesn't trace a path to every light source, because it bounces the ray off the surface and then keeps bouncing until it hits a light source, ultimately reaching the camera. These calculations involve a large number of complex mathematical calculations for each pixel in the final image. So as you can see, the complexity of rendering does not only come from vertices, polygons, textures, voxels, and so on, but also from the light paths that have to be calculated, which are counted by the billions. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to try 3exam and subscribe to this channel because it is free. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.